Friends, Ash here. Welcome back to Gin Sense. The power to determine the greatest fragrance releases of the year is in your hands, for the most part. It's that time once again for the Reader's Choice Awards that Fragrantica does every year. So for 2023, they have a ton of categories where you guys can go and vote and determine who will be the champion of each one of these categories. So as of when I'm filming this video, there's about three weeks to go until the awards are concluded or the voting is concluded and then the awards are doled out. Now I'm not gonna tell you who you should be voting for, who you shouldn't be voting for, but we're gonna go through some of these categories and I'm gonna tell you kind of what I think about how everything is uh, shaping up right now. It's always a great time to check out these awards each year and kind of see how everything is shaking out. Now I have a link in the description below where you can go ahead and check out the awards and vote if you feel so inclined. Sometimes these awards are just special. They're special. And I'm not gonna tell you that you should vote for SpongeBob Gary for some of these categories. I'm not gonna tell you that because that would be a shame if that happened. Now, before we dive into the categories, here's a bunch of codes. Check these codes out. If you wanna use these codes, you can use these codes. If you don't wanna use these codes, don't use these codes. But if you wanna save some money, you could use those codes to save some money with those codes. All right, now I'm gonna mainly be covering the fragrances uh, for men because uh, believe it or not, I know this is real crazy, but the uh, overwhelming majority of people that watch my channel are men. So yeah, we're gonna kick things off with the biggest one, the biggest category, I feel like best perfume for men 2023. And there's one thing that you will realize the second that you click onto this category, which is, is this supposed to be for fragrances released this year? Or is it just kind of in this general time frame? This is one thing that I have uh, harped on in the past with the Fragrantica Reader's Choice Awards. And that is they will have like, you know, 2023 release of the year, but then they allow you to vote for fragrances that were not released in 2023. It looks like for the most part, everything here is from 2022 or 2023, but you know, just an FYI, 2022 is not the same thing as 2023. I know it's a crazy thing to put out there that 2022 is in fact not 2023, but that's just how it is. So essentially this is for your, your favorite men's fragrance release I guess of the past two years, because if you look at the uh, the current leaders in this category, you have uh, Gentleman Eau de Parfum Reserve Privé in second place, that came out last year. We've got uh, Terre d'Hermes Eau Givre, that came out last year. We've got Noir Extreme Parfum, uh, that one came out, oh, that yeah, that was last year. And then we've got uh, also Le Beau Le Parfum, which, yeah, that, that also came out last year. So when you look through the uh, top 10 best fragrance releases of the year for men. Eight out of the top 10 are from 2022. Okay. In first place right now though, is a fragrance from this year, which is Lamal Elixir. Now, I also happen to think that Lamal Elixir is the best fragrance release of the year for men. So I agree. I mean, the rest of it, the rest of the top 10 is a complete mess, uh, assuming that you're wanting to make it specific to 2023. But if you don't really care about that and you just say, you know, it can be last year or this year, then it's actually a pretty good list. And then interestingly enough, there are some fragrances that are left out of the top 10 right now, as far as voting goes for fragrance releases of this year, like Born in Roma Intense, Invictus Victory Elixir, uh, Altair from Parfums de Marley, Why Eau de Parfum Intense, Gentleman Society, Loma de All Platine Privé, One Million Royal, on and on. So yeah, most of this is uh, 2022 releases. And uh, to be fair, the releases from 2022 that are chosen are all pretty freaking good. And then we have the best perfume unisex for 2023. And again, this is uh, kind of funny. The fragrance that is in the lead right now, the one that is winning, is Angel Share, which came out in 2020. And by looking at this, I can tell what they've done. So they have made it where you can only vote 2022 or 2023 releases. That's what it looks like. Uh, and Angel Share Anniversary Edition is what's in first place, which technically came out in 2022, which is just a special edition, you know, special packaging and whatnot. So yeah, people have just like said, I don't give a crap. I don't care about any of that. Angel Share is the best unisex fragrance. And then somebody's like, ah, oh, but that came out three years ago. I don't give a crap. I'm gonna vote for the anniversary edition. And it's, 
it's in first place. And then in second place is Comra. So obviously Angel Share is the winner here, right? Because it's in first place and then the clone is in second. Sometimes I look at these awards and I'm just like, <laughs> rest of the lineup looks, you know, kind of like you would expect it to. Gris Charnel Extrait is in third. Baby Cat is in fourth. Tobacco Honey is in fifth. And then uh, Tom Ford Noir Extreme Parfum Altair. We have Bake by Acro. And then Lo Papier from Diptyque. And uh, Paragon from Initio. So that's the top 10 as of when I'm filming. And if once again you heard some of those and thought to yourself, oh, those actually came out last year, you are once again, correct. Oh, and by the way, uh, for women, best perfume release for women in 2023, Angel Share is in, is in second place. It's just all over the place. Angel Share in second place for women, Kamra in 10th place for women, Kamra in ninth place for men, and then second place Kamra, Angel Share first place for unisex. So you would think with Angel Share being in first for unisex, in second for women, that for best niche perfume, of 2023, probably being first, right? No, it, 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 it's not even in the top 10. What? I swear, some of you guys, when you're doing this voting are just like. <laughs> Angel Sarah for men, unisex. It's not, it's not good in niche, it's not a top 10. It is a top 10 of, of the year. It's, the top, it's better than the designers, all those better than those niche. But in the niche category, it's actually worse than the niche. So Gris Charnel Extrait is in first, and then Ani X in second, and Bake is in third for the best niche perfumes of the year. So once again, a 2022 fragrance is actually winning right now. A best marine perfume. It no longer matters that it's not 2023 stuff. At this point, it is wide open, baby, whatever you want. So best marine perfume, aquatic fragrances. And uh, right now in first, Aqua de Jo, Profumo. I feel like that one's gonna win just with how much love it gets in the community. Uh, let me take a look here. Yeah, as of when I'm filming this, it has 879 upvotes, 277 downvotes. In second place is Profundo, Aqua de Jo Profundo, with 711 up and 305 down. So it has more down and less up. I think Aqua de Jo a Profumo is pretty easily gonna run away with this one. And when you start to go down from those two, uh, there's a steep drop off. So. Yeah, everything else is pretty much screwed. Now, this is where I pause it to you, dear friend, dear viewer. Should we all team up to vote something into first place? Can we do it? Do we have the power? I can tell you that a few years back, I, I may or may not have encouraged people to vote for SpongeBob Gary as, uh, I think it was the best Aventus alternative. And we did get into the top 10 with Gary. We did. And I did get contacted by somebody from Fragrantica who scolded me for that. I did. They were like, don't do that again. Don't mess with our voting, with your Gary. Do nonsense, your stupidity, you moron, you idiot. So again, I'm not saying Gary nothing, okay? Because we don't want, we don't want that coming down on us, right? But I feel like we, I feel like we need to get behind one of these fragrances and take it to the promised land. Which one though? I'm thinking. Still thinking. Still thinking. Okay, I got it. Not Profundo, it's fine. Profundo can be in second. I'm okay with that. Profumo is cool. Profumo, Profundo, they sound close enough anyway. Who cares? Other fragrances that are in that category as of right now, uh, they, they make sense. The original Aqua de Zoe Cool Water is in there. Um, light Blue O oh, Intense, Bulgari Aqua. Yeah, well, that one makes sense, doesn't it? Allure Om Sport, Wood Sage and Sea Salt, all good. Marine category, all good. We're gonna skip down to another one real quick. We'll come back to a couple of these others before we wrap it up, but let's go down to this category uh, that they do always have on here. I hate this perfume. They always put it in there because they they gotta stoke the flames, you know? Because everybody knows that when you go to like the Oscars, it's like stupidest movie everybody hates of the year. You win. I mean, I know there's the Razzies, right? But come on, that's separate. That's a different thing. So they always have, I hate this perfume and always in first place is, is the one that's in first place now, Dior Sauvage. Oh, I hate it. It makes all the money in the world and Johnny Depp hangs out with wolves and plays electric guitar in the desert. 
That triggers me. I want to flip my table because of that, right? It's always in first place. It's always the winner, which isn't fair. There should be uh, another winner of this category. Let's look at it now. Yeah, Sauvage has 989 up, 479 down. Second place, Baccarat Rouge 540. Honestly, I didn't realize that many people hated it, other than the fact that it's cloned to death. We've got uh, La Vie Espelle in there, One Million Parfum, Phantom, Mugler's Angel, Good Girl, Baccarat Rouge 540 once again, Ariana Grande Cloud, which is Baccarat Rouge 540 once again. But then I wanna draw your attention to this, okay? In 10th place, Yop Om. This is our time. Brothers, this. Yop Ohm, it needs to win, okay? We need to take Yop, put it in first, move Savage out, crown a new king, okay? I'm gonna do my part, Starship Trooper style. That's right, I just I just voted. Did you hear that click? Yop, Yop Ohm, all right? I feel like we can do this. We, we can definitely get better than 10th, but we need to take that yoke, put it in the first, okay? I wanna see Cloud moving down into 10th, Baccarat Rouge 540 moving down. I wanna see that yoke moving up. Yes, it's a classic, okay? I agree, it's a classic, but maybe not in a good way. It's a classic in the same way as like a, a Pinto, you know, the vehicle, the car where you're driving along and it gets hit from behind and explodes into flames and uh, you know takes you out in a very uh, painful way. That's Yope, Yope is the Pinto. So you can look at it and be like, oh, that's very much of its time. Yes, it is. You wanna be wearing it, driving it nowadays? Hmm, well, I don't think so. So that, that's that's it, that's that's what we gotta do. Yope, let's move that on up. I don't know if we can beat Savage because that one has won. Uh, I hate this perfume for many years in a row, but we gotta give it our best shot. So any of you that have Fragrantica accounts, let's do it. Hopefully I don't get yelled at for this one. Let's check out, uh, let's go to something happier next. Best men's perfume of all time, ever. And in first place, Dior Own Intense. This one also pretty much every year wins. I think at some point they maybe need to like retire some of the fragrances from some of these categories because Dior Homme Intense wins best men's perfume of all time like every time. Interestingly enough, Terre d'Hermes in second place. I say interestingly enough because uh, Terre d'Hermes has a lot of detractors. I mean, to be fair, so does Dior Homme Intense. So a lot of people are like, when can I wear that? Uh, Dior Homme Intense, one of my favorites of all time course, but Terre d'Hermes, uh, I also think, to be fair, is really, 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 really good. Fantastic. But a lot of people will say they, they just can't rock with it, the kind of like flintiness, earthiness in there. Uh, they hate it a little bit. And this is very interesting. Lou de Chanel Eau de Parfum in third place. Best men's fragrance of all time. It shows... Uh, the different way that people view Sauvage versus Bleu de Chanel, at least in the fragrance community. Obviously in normal day-to-day -day life, those two are the two most popular fragrances in the world right now for men. But especially in the fragrance world, you know, Sauvage gets a bad rap. And so it gets placed in the first of the worst of all time. And then uh, Bleu de Chanel, best of all time. Are they that drastically different that one is literally the worst thing that has ever existed and the other is one of the best things that has ever existed? Nah, not really, but that's what, you know, hype one way or the other will get for you. Dior Homme Parfum in fourth and then Sauvage Elixir in fifth. That's the Sauvage Du Jour. That's the one that everybody is about. Then we got Leighton, Aventus, Ombre Leather, Spice Bomb Extreme, and La Nuit de Lome rounding out the top 10. All of those, of course, really big releases. I'm not sure how many of those would make my personal top 10 of all time, at least a couple would. But overall, it's a really solid batch. And there are many other categories, but I wanna go over just one last one, which is most boring perfume for men, 2023. Yes, the most boring, the worstest of the worst. In first place, Yves Saint Laurent's Myself, which absolutely, I could see this coming from 10,000 miles away. Because myself is not drastically new. Doesn't really do anything that's never been done before. It's it's something that you can definitely find, you know, the things that have inspired it, right? But then at the same time, it's definitely not made for people like me or probably you. It is made for somebody who just wants a versatile people pleaser that gets compliments, which is why 
It is currently one of the best selling fragrances in the United States. And there will also be that <laughs> where it's selling extremely well. And so people will see that that are in the fragrance world and they'll be like, that sucks. It doesn't deserve it. You don't deserve that. You know, it's like, um, I don't know, musicians who are really into progressive metal or something like that. And then uh, they see a pop singer and they're just like, ah, you don't deserve it. You don't have the talent. It feels kind of like that. So that one, I could absolutely see why that's in first place. That makes sense. One Million Elixir is in second place, which technically came out last year. And then uh, Phantom Parfum in third, and then Absolute Aventus in fourth. And uh, ah, I don't know how much I agree with that. Past that, uh, Armani Code, Eau de Toilette, which, okay. I mean, it's basically just a rebottling. It's like very minusculely different from the original code, you know? Is it boring because it already exists? Like, and has existed for a long time? I don't know. Got Aqua de Joe Parfum at ninth. So it is uh, at the same time, one of the most boring fragrances of the year. And also one of the best fragrances of the year because it's right now in sixth for best perfume of the year for men. Go figure. Invictus Victory Elixir on most boring. No. Nah. I don't think so. And then eighth, uh, Mont Blanc Explorer Platinum. That one I could see. I feel like uh, the new Wanted Eau de Parfum could be in the most boring. Uh, that one, you know, I thought was not really that good and it didn't grow on me as time went on. It was one of those ones where it's like, well, okay. Um, what else? Cool Water, Oceanic Edition. That's not really that exciting. Uh, Sand Desert at Sunset, I feel like it's just a not really all that well done clone of Angel Share. There are a lot of other ones out there that are much better than that. Uh, Bulgari Man Rain Essence, just kind of so-so. I feel like all those are, are worse <laughs> than the majority of what they got on here. I feel like Phantom Parfum is on there because it's in the Phantom line, and that's pretty much why. One Million Elixir is on there because it's in the One Million line, and that's pretty much why. And then uh, Invictus Victory Elixir is on there because it's in the Invictus line. And Absolute Aventus is on there because it is an Aventus fragrance. That really, honestly, to me, is why those are probably on there. Because Paco Rabanne gets a lot of hate. I mean, three of the 10 are Paco Rabanne because they have tacky bottles, which they absolutely do. And they're typically very loud and sweet. And so for people that are really hardcore into fragrances, they view that and they're like, oh, just childish crap. I don't like it. And they just auto hate it. And then uh, with Creed, I mean, there's a reason, but they get a lot of hate too. Really high prices, the whole um, ghost perfuming, which more people found out about and have found out about here recently. You know, them taking credit for perfumers work and just, you know, being sold over and over for massive profits. And it doesn't give good vibes, right? And so Absolute Aventus comes out, a lot of people are like, Ugh. But I actually think it smells really good. Uh, it's expensive, it's expensive as crap, but it smells good. So there we go, those are the awards. They are up for voting again, it's in the description. And uh, yup, that's all I gotta say. Thank you guys for hanging with me here until the end. Let me know also uh, what you feel about these. Like you think for the most part, pretty well spot on. Do you agree that if it's for 2023, it should be for 2023? So I take those 2022s and just whoosh, or do you not really care? Thank you guys for hanging with me. Stay safe out there. I'll see you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys later. Thank you.